So I saw this thing on Twitter that said, a hospital is the only building you leave without entering. And honestly, my mind is blown. I've been thinking about that non-stop for the past like two days and I don't know what is what anymore to be honest. Hey guys welcome back to my channel today we are back in my humble car. Vroom vroom machine. Um, we haven't done this in a long long time since January 4 I think or the subway vegan. I don't know but it's been a long time man and I've missed a drive with me slash sit in my car and do a video so what we're gonna do today because Lockdown is still a thing. I don't know what's happening with the world. I thought I'd do a drive with me to go to Starbucks And I'm gonna couple that up with another assumptions video and yeah I just thought it'd be a little two-in-one, you know drive with me assumptions combine them both give you something to watch Welcome back sit back enjoy the drive with me I'm gonna have to move you over to my phone because I'll probably get pulled over. Let's go because I'm thirsty I hope they take my reusable cup because they didn't last time. So yeah, how's everyone been? I haven't done a um, I just need to put, put this out there before I kind of um, go on about anything else. I've got this video that I've planned. I might have closed my window. I get distracted really easily. I've got this video that I've planned, I've recorded, and it's done. It was done ages ago, I think two months ago, but I never got around to editing it because it's a really long video to edit. Starbucks, what can I get for you today? Hello, Nuria. Um, Hello. Can I please have a venti uh, soya? No. Uh, no. No, a soya caramel frappe with sugar free caramel, please. Thank you. Thank you. So, I hope you can hear me. I'm moving my chair back. I've got my venti. Soya sugar free caramel coffee frap. Look at that. Look how good that looks. Mmm, I'm excited. Do you know the meme that's taking up a lot of space in my brain right now? I'm gonna put it in. I don't know if I can get a can. It's the the um Nicki Minaj one where she's on live and she's just like big boobs. Big boobs? What? Um, ciao. Anyway, so and that and her laughing. I'm gonna put them both in because you know what? They are probably my favorite memes of all time. <laughs> I cannot stop listening to them. Can you hear me still? Or is it, I'm just gonna have to close, I'm gonna have to boil because who cares. Right, so we're gonna do the assumptions tag. I've done this to death, but I just find it fun. I like hearing what people have to say about me. I'm genuinely curious, I'm really nosy, but that's not a good thing because then it hurts my feelings. Anything for a video to be honest. So the first assumption is, I'm just gonna pop them up on the screen so you can see them. You or your family has money. I would say, I personally don't um, anymore because I've spent it all on backpacking and travel. Currently, no. I do save a lot of money for traveling. However, I'm very bad with my money. I'm like, really bad. And my friends can vouch for that. I am awful with spending. Um, I'll try and save up and then I'll see something nice and I'll be like, oh, just come on, one one time. And then that one time will send us all 100 times. And then next thing we know, we're minus 200 pounds. And then I cry. And in regards to the second one, my family has money. My family, I would say, I have to be careful because I don't really want to, I don't want to talk, I can talk about my money because I'm poor. Um, I don't want to talk about my family's money because it's not my money. But I would say we're comfortable. I've always been comfortable growing up and I've been very lucky to have what I have. And I've been given a lot of opportunities and yeah, we are not rich. So if anyone assumed that we're mega rich, we're not. We're just comfortable and my parents have always been... There's a thing, Indians are so tight with their money. That's a big thing. That's just one thing you need to know. Indians are really tight with their money. So that serves them really well because they save a lot. Um, and don't buy things that are not necessary like me buying pick and mix every month, you know? Like my mum, she doesn't buy anything at all, like at all. And it's just the whole, I think, their culture, like the way they were brought up. So yeah, we're comfortable. I would say we're happy and we don't have to worry about anything. But I wouldn't say we're really well off, like we're not. Next one, your favourite Beyonce album is self-titled. So if you do not know, I am a ride or die, die hard Beyonce fan. I am a Beyonce stan. She is honestly my mother. I told my mum that she was my real mum and my mum didn't talk to me for a week. With that said, 
that's got no relation to what I'm gonna say. As much as I love the self-titled album, and I think that's what really got me into Beyonce. Like that's the first time I paid attention to when it when it actually was released. I was very consciously aware of it and I listened to it when it came out and stuff like that. And then that kind of progressed into my obsession and my love of Beyonce. But yeah, before that I wasn't I was like a I was a Beyonce. Beyonce? I was a Beyonce listener, but I never really like kept up to date with all the album releases and like her what she used to do. But then after I think when I grew up I kind of became more aware, I guess. So, self-titled is not my favorite album. I just forgot to answer the question. But self-titled is not my favorite album. Lemonade is. And if you have watched my video from Monday, you'll know some of the reasons why. But honestly, Lemonade in itself is a beautiful piece of work. It explores different genres of music. And like I said in Monday's video, the album, the film, and then the dissect podcast that's on it, has taught me so much about black history and Beyonce herself has also taught me a lot about black history and she's made me want to read into it and really take an active interest in it and educate myself. Lemonade is so submerged in black history and black culture and what's happening in America currently and it was released in 2016 and it's still prevalent as ever. That album still has that freshness every time I listen to it I learn something new. Like I said the, the Dissect podcast on Spotify has taught me something new about every single song and what every single visual of the album means and it's honestly such a beautiful inspiring piece of work and it's a tool for education. Let's not forget that it's been used in colleges in America to they've taught about it so impact but yeah lemonade is my favorite album purely because of how monumentally intense it is i guess because there's so much to it and i don't think i'm ever gonna get to a place where i'm gonna be like oh i already knew that i'm gonna find more and more and more as i keep watching it i keep listening to it and that's beauty that is wine that is how you age your wine that made no sense next one you're insecure about your figure and how you look 1,022.5% yes. I hate my figure. I hate, I grew up hating the color of my skin. I grew up hating my weight. I grew up hating the way I looked and that's not gone away, but I've found some peace in some ele elements of myself. Like my skin, I know, but now I'm an adult. I'm like, I'm never gonna be able to change it. You just embrace it. I am really, really insecure about the way I look, especially my weight. I'm doing a lot currently to lose weight. So I feel good. I'm feeling positive. But that's something that has always bothered me. Like family would call you like fat and like make fun of your clothing and like things like that when you grow up and they all think it's a joke. But honestly, I think a lot of it, honestly, it all got to me. Um, and I'm really insecure. I am really insecure. I'm insecure in my teeth. I'm insecure with my smile, um, my weight, the skin color. But those things, things I can remedy and like things I'm, I've come to terms with and know that they're okay. Um, but my weight is my number one thing that really gets to me. Next one is you were popular at school. No and yes. I came out when I was in year 12, but I think throughout school people always knew. So I was that token gay friend where I would always be friends with all the popular girls, um, which then put me in the popular group, but I was never popular popular. But I was also friends with everyone else, like the whole social class system at school. Like I was friends with anyone and everyone to be honest. So yes and no, like I had popular friends and some of them would class me in the popular group with them. I would class myself in that, but no, I would say no and yes, 50-50. I got hurt by a guy. Interestingly, no. I think the biggest thing that has added to my insecurities and um, the colour of my skin was the gay community. I've never felt like I fitted in because of the colour I am. People will try and pull it off. They'll be like, it's not racist. It's a preference. A preference is pastel or salad. You can't choose to exclude a whole race of people because you don't like one person. Like, that's, that is racist. I think I just avoided the gay community in general because of that. And I never felt wanted, I never felt included. And the one thing that didn't really hold up in my head was the fact that I was a minority and they were a minority. But I was a double minority. So I thought, would have thought that they would have let me in and, like, made me feel comfortable. But that wasn't the case. And I think racism in the gay community is a massive, massive thing that needs to be addressed. But no one wants to talk about it. And here's me talking about it. So if you've experienced it, speak up. Because it's wrong. And it makes people feel absolutely awful to the point of never wanting to be in a relationship ever because they will never be found attracted by anyone so there's that so that has added to my insecurities unfortunately the rain is coming down now and i'm not happy because it was literally boiling hot a minute ago and now it's raining 
I don't understand. Anyway, let's move on to the next question. Do you want to travel as much as you can? Honestly, right now, yes. I want to just get up and get out. I've already started to make plans and things of when I want to go where next year because this year is a complete write-off. I'm hoping to go to New York in November, but it's slowly looking more and more unlikely, which is breaking my heart because I've waited for so long to go. <sighs> But I want to travel as much as I can. There is so much of the world. I want to see Australia, Philippines, New Zealand, Fiji, Sri Lanka, um, Africa, more of, more of America, South America, more of Europe. Russia is a no-go. I would never go to Russia, mm, period. No, thank you. Travel, I want it to be a part of my life that I will always do. I don't want to ever stop traveling. And I think once you start traveling, this is my biggest thing. When you start, you cannot stop. That solar Amsterdam trip, that I took back in 2018 honestly set off a fire because I was just like you know what let's go let's go solo travel is so much fun because you know what I love waking up putting your coat on putting my man bag on and just going out in the early morning can you hear me can you hear me still and just wandering getting lost in the streets having a cup of coffee just walking and seeing all the beautiful sights and just getting lost in a city when you're on your own that is the best thing I can ever recommend to anyone and I found out that I really 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 love solo traveling so hopefully a lot more solo travel next year I hope I just never get bored of it I don't think I will but I, if the day I get bored of it will be the day I know that I need to get a new personality trait to be honest you're a happy bubbly person yes I am and especially when I get drunk I get 10 times more I'm like zoop like let's go super like energetic if I want to be I am bubbly like I love to engage with people but this is the question i'm not an extrovert and i'm not an introvert and there's no such thing as boxes anymore i'm on the middle i mean i think i'm literally in the middle because i love people but i also lack my own time hence solo traveling i am quite bubbly i think especially solo traveling meeting new people has allowed me to just be myself because there's no ties to back home so i can just be who i really am as soppy as that sounds but it genuinely does happen and i don't think i pay attention to it that much but i'm looking back in retrospect definitely do so another one was you can either sing really well or really bad i myself like to think i can sing really well when i'm in the shower when i'm in the car it's the shower car world tour whatever we are going we are driving and i'll play like 20 albums and i'll sing i'll do the moves granted driving and dancing shouldn't be done at the same time look how much it's pumped up i think i can sing really well my friends my companions my acquaintances my siblings doth not agree because i genuinely scream when I sing and as much as I try and like to hit the Ariana as much as I like I'd like to try and hit the Ariana Grande notes I can only do it in the shower and now I can't sing I'm sorry to say I can't sing I'm sorry to that man I wouldn't know a thing sorry to this man yes everybody that is the last assumption there weren't that many So we're going to have to run the video up quite quickly because my battery is about to die and I don't understand what the camera If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my Instagram and my other social medias are linked down below. I shall see you all in my next video, which is next Monday. I can tell you that for certain. But yeah, till then, take care. Look after yourselves. I shall see you very soon. Bye.